All right, Facebook friends and family, Instagram family, here we are, five o'clock Central Standard Time, coming to you live from the Supreme Court of the United States of America, right here in the nation's capital, right over there behind me, or in front of me, I should say, is the capital. It's looking beautiful. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day here in Washington, D.C. So here's the deal. Remember, we want you to be media missionary, social media missionary. So the more thumbs up, the more hearts, the more likes, all that stuff that you give us, it helps it push it out to more and more people. So don't be shy. Let us know you're watching even right now. So we're here. We're going to wait just a second, talk a little bit. So we're here. Sarah and I are here. Uh, Elise is here with us. And the one and only pastor, Nate Dixon, is here with us. I wanted to come to you today to talk about two things, one on a national level, the second one on an international level, two really, really important issues that I just wanted to speak into and, and give you my head and my heart on these matters. The first thing I want to talk to you about is what's known as SB1 or Senate Bill 1. It's been called or named, I should say, by our Democratic friends, uh, the People's Act and it really isn't the People's Act. It's probably more accurate to call it the Politicians Act or even the Corruption Act. Now listen, I don't know if you're like me, but you get tired of heightened and exaggerated comments from media personalities just trying to stir people up. I, I get that. So when I tell you that this is historically, radically important, I'm not exaggerating at all. Senate Bill 1, if it is to pass, it already passed the House. If it passes the Senate and becomes law, I want you to listen to me, you can mark this down. It is going to literally change the fabric of the United States of America from this moment forward. Senate Bill 1, beloved, it cannot pass. And we have to do whatever we can call whatever senator we can from whatever state we live in and let them know we do not want Senate Bill 1 to pass because it will forever change the fabric of this country. This is an unprecedented power grab by the Democratic leadership. It's looking to overturn states' rights to determine individual states' voting laws. Like this is, this is government overreach to the max with really dramatic consequences. It's a totally partisan thing. There isn't one Republican who's supporting it at all. And here's what it'll do. And I'm gonna give you some examples. It is going to open up the floodgates. It's gonna open the floodgates for illegal voting like we have never seen before. If you were concerned about what happened in the last election, That'll, that'll look like kindergarten compared to what's going to happen if SB1 passes. So let me just give you a few things that I think the common sense person, the average American, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, doesn't matter. But listen to what SB1 would allow in this country. First of all, politicians who are running for office would be able to get millions of dollars of of taxpayer money for their campaigns and for their reelections. That means that, that your taxes that you're paying could very well go to a politician who's running for office that you are adamantly against. You would be supporting that candidate if SB1 passes. Totally egregious. A nightmare. Next, it would pay for political operatives to go into nursing homes, um, dormitories, emergency shelters, various kinds of residencies, do ballot harvesting, which is, which is having someone sign a ballot, and then that operative then takes those ballots and supposedly turns them in. Do they turn in all of them, or do they turn in just the ones that they're in support of? ballot harvesting. It's a nightmare. This would totally allow it to happen and again would totally corrupt the voting system moving forward. Beyond that, it would be illegal. Now listen to me. It would be illegal to require ID at voting stations. What, like, what are you talking about? 
you need an ID for any common sense thing. Why in the world would the Democrats not require identification to perform our sacred act of voting? I mean, this is ridiculous. This, this is egregious, as I said a minute ago. It would allow that to happen. Universal mail-in voting would be permitted. Again, all of the corruption that happens with mail-in voting, that would be allowed now. Uh, listen to this one. Ballots arriving a week after election day would be counted. So what's the point of having the end of an election at election day if you're going to count ballots a week later? Don't you see with all the corruption that this allows corrupt people and they're out there to count ballots that showed up all of a sudden? SB1 would allow that to happen. Last but not least, there's more I could go on and on. I just want to give you a taste of this. Unregistered voters could vote, listen to me, simply by showing up on election day, filling out a form, and voting with no ID and no vetting whatsoever. Does that trouble you? It should trouble you big time. It troubles me big time. And listen, the list could go on and on. So here's what you need to do as a concerned citizen of the United States of America. You need to call your senators and you need to tell them you are against Senate Bill Number 1 because of the things that I've just listed and many, many more. If this passes again, this will change the fabric of the United States of America and we dare not cross this line. Now, let's move on to international scope. I want to talk to you about what's happening in Israel. So many people are rightfully concerned. You're watching the news the last couple days, the bombing, the shelling that's taking place there. Um, I've talked to my friends today in Israel from, from military and from political circles, and they're giving me good news. And so I want to start with that. They don't see this lasting more than a few days, a few more days, which I'm grateful for, and we'll, we'll see how that unfolds. They don't see this being a, a long, long military campaign. I hope that's true. I also want to remind you, Psalm 122 verse 6 challenges us, encourages us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now that's praying for the peace of everyone in Jerusalem. Jew, Gentile, Arab, it means praying for the peace of Jerusalem. So let's do that. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray for the salvation of Jerusalem. Let's pray for every single person to come to a saving faith. Everyone, regardless of who they are, I want you to hear me say that, to come into a saving faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me talk to you about what's going on here, okay? I want to just break this down as simply as possible. What this is, is a demonstration of Hamas's power for two reasons. Number one, they want to be seen as the sole power that does two things. Number one, who delivers the Palestinian people. They don't want to give Mahmoud Abbas uh, from the Palestinian Authority any credibility from the West Bank, from the Gaza Strip. Hamas wants to demonstrate its power to deliver all of the Palestinian people. And then secondly, beyond that, what they want to do is then take ownership of the Temple Mount. Now we know the Jordanians want it, the Saudis want it, the Turks want it, but Hamas wants it. And so in concert with Islamic Jihad, they are doing everything that they can to stir up problems and to try to liberate and, and deliver the Palestinian people so that they can then take claim on the Temple Mount really really scary stuff now beyond that let me say this I, I don't say that this isn't a pun here who's calling the shots on all of this Iran make no mistake about it Iran behind the scenes is calling the shots they're funding uh, through finance and through arms they are funding the demonic works of Hamas and Islamic Jihad to do what they're doing in firing listen They've fired over a thousand rockets into Israel already. And thank God the Iron Dome has been working very, very well. It's been knocking down 
um, hundreds and hundreds of these rockets that are coming from the Gaza Strip. We thank God for that. But they fired over a thousand. How many rockets has Israel fired? 200. Hamas has fired five times the amount of rockets that Israel has. And yet when you watch the fake news, the, the, the medianites, as my friend Amir Tsarfati calls them, what, what are they saying? That Israel is responding disproportionately that Israel is too heavy-handed, that Israel is is coming against the, the Palestinians in a way that is unjust and an overreach and an overreaction, and Israel gets the blame all the time. It doesn't matter that Hamas started firing rockets out of the blue the other day. What matters is we've got to continue to blame Israel. So let me just make a very easy prediction. Regardless of what happens over the next few days, you can count on this. Israel will get the blame. And Israel will get the blame for what? Israel will get the blame for killing women, they'll get the blame for killing children, and they'll get the blame for destroying the infrastructure, the buildings, etc., of the Gaza Strip and the Palestinian people. Now listen, again, I want you to hear me say this very, very clearly. We need to pray for peace. We need to seek the peace of the nations plural. Peace is a good thing. Living in peace and health and prosperity is a good thing. Having to defend yourself is sometimes necessary. And so what we want to do is pray for peace. Listen, let's pray for people to come to know Christ. But let's make sure that we have informed ourselves of what the truth is and we're not just listening to biased news reports from people with an agenda to twist and pervert the truth. And so I want you to listen, I want you to dig, I want you to read, I want you to pay attention to what's really happening. We are living in a day, beloved, make no mistake about it, we are living in a day where the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, the father of lies, is doing everything he can to twist and pervert and deceive people. He wants them riddled, held, chained with lies rather than knowing the truth and the freedom that comes from knowing the truth. Again, what did Jesus say? You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. But remember this, you have to know the truth first before you get free. So know the truth, pay attention, get involved, pray for governments. First Timothy chapter two, verses one through five. Paul tells Christians, get involved. Get involved. Listen, it's not spiritual to say, oh, I'm just about Jesus and don't care about politics or religion. If that's your mindset, you are violating the scriptures. We are called to get involved. We are called to pray. We are called to speak up. Listen, the apostle Paul, when he gets arrested, what is he? He demands his rights as a Roman citizen and he demands to be taken to Rome to speak to Caesar himself. Paul didn't sit back and shy away and say, oh, well, this is just the will of God in some you know, kind of fatalistic way. No, he knew his rights as a citizen. He wanted to get engaged and he spoke truth to power. We've got to be the same way, beloved, in the days in which we live. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for America. Pray for her leaders. Pray for this world. Pray for Israel. And let's believe God to do something awesome. We're waiting for the third great awakening to hit this land. Let's wait for it. Let's believe for it and pray for it together. God bless you mightily. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to come to you from the beautiful capital, Washington, D.C., specifically it's standing in front of the United States Supreme Court. We love you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Keep looking up because our redemption draws near. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.